Josh has been having lessons with his instructor Mark for a few months and has his driving test soon. He has good car control, but does he have any other weaknesses that need addressing before visiting the test centre? In this video, he will meet Matt for the first time, who will conduct a mock test to assess his driving and give feedback afterwards. Unfortunately, it's raining today, so this will test Josh's skills even more. Before we get started, please subscribe to our channel, and if you found this video interesting, click the like button as it really helps other people find us. We try to conduct mock tests in a similar way to a real driving test, to make it as realistic as possible. On a real test, the examiner would check the candidate's driving license and test their eyesight before getting into the car. We'll join the test just before the safety check question. Um, before we get started though, if you could tell me something about the car, tell me how would you switch on the rear fog light and when would you use it? Um, you would use this little button down here. Okay. Use it when the visibility is lower than uh, when you can't see more than 100 meters. Perfect, good answer. And then later on, I'll ask you to demonstrate something or show me something whilst you're driving. So um, I'm sure you've practiced all of those. Um, yeah, um, all, we're gonna start with independent driving, um, but don't trust the sat-nav until we've left the car park. It's unreliable inside the car park. So I'll guide you out of here and then we'll hand over to the sat-nav. So I'll just double check I've got my sound on, which it has, good. It'll zoom in when we get near the exit. So uh, if you're ready, um, anything you wanna ask or happy to get started? No. Cool, all right then. So uh, when you're ready, if you could pull away and turn left to go up the hill, please. And then we need to follow that car into that right turn, please. When we get to the giveaway line, we need to go straight down the hill towards the new houses. Follow it around the corner, and then the sat nav should. Oh. Here we go. Sat nav's on now. Since it hasn't directed you, we're going to turn right at the end of this road. Turn right. Ah, there we go. Nice hill start there, especially at the start of the test where nerves can sometimes be a factor. Yep, so I'll just leave with the sat-nav. If I spot any mistakes, I'll correct them. Otherwise, keep driving. At the end of the road, turn right. Now this is a right bend, not a right turn. We are currently in third gear and that looks like a very tight corner ahead.
After 200 yards, go right on the roundabout, third exit. Go right on the roundabout, third exit. yards, cross the roundabout, first exit. One problem with driving in the rain is that it is much harder to see the road markings at junctions. Cross the roundabout, first exit. For the next roundabout, we need to go straight ahead, second exit, and there is a small white sign to help you. yards, cross the roundabout, second exit. Cross the roundabout, second exit. yards, go left on the roundabout, second exit. Notice how many exits there are at this roundabout. We will need to indicate carefully. Go left on the roundabout, second exit. I'm going to cancel your signal because there's it might confuse someone over there. Could you show me how you turn on the rear window demist, please? Yeah, if you could show me, that's good. Yeah, thanks, lovely. When driving in poor weather conditions like this, consider which speed is safest to drive at. It's good to remember that the speed limit is just the maximum allowed, and it's fine to drive slower when needed. Good driving from Josh here, keeping a safe gap to the vehicle in front of us. The highway code recommends at least four seconds following distance on a wet road.
After 200 yards, go left on the roundabout, first exit. Go left on the roundabout, first exit. In poor weather, we should approach junctions more carefully to prevent any loss of control. Brake earlier, especially when driving downhill. Josh does well to spot the 30 limit sign and adjust his speed smoothly. So have you got your own car yet? Yeah, I've got a um, 2019 Renault Clio. Oh, nice. To do lots of practice on that? Yeah. Cool, that always helps. We are approaching a large crossroad junction, but the sat-nav doesn't give any voice guidance. We should check the display on the screen and then look forward and plan ahead. The white sign on the left shows which lane to take. When driving slowly like this, it's easy to get too close to the vehicle in front, but Josh keeps his distance well. After 300 yards, cross the roundabout, first exit, then turn right. Cross the roundabout, first exit, then turn right. Good job pre-selecting first gear, so we are ready to move away promptly. After 300 yards, Turn right, then turn right. It's the right turn just after the traffic lights. Turn right, then turn right. At this point, Josh has four driving faults for mirrors signalling. Since this is an inherent fault that is regularly made, we will stop counting this as a driving fault anymore and instead mark it as a serious fault. After 200 yards, Turn right.
This road has two-way traffic and many parked cars, so Josh is wise to drive carefully. Turn right. This is a fairly steep hill start, but Josh prefers not to use the handbrake. Let's see how he does. Busy around here today, isn't it? Dealing with oncoming traffic on double parked streets like this can be tricky. Josh is doing well so far. It's okay to be patient if you are at a busy junction. After 300 yards, turn left. If you could pull up just after the blue car, but before the next junction, please. Perhaps by the telegraph pole. Turn left. All right, thanks very much. That's the end of the independent driving section, so I'll uh, exit that now works different to my car. <laughs> um, okay, yeah, all good? Yeah. Perfect. So uh, I'll direct you as normal for the rest of the test. Hopefully we can squeeze a manoeuvre in somewhere. Uh, when you're ready, if you could pull away and then turn left for me. Then at the end of this road, if we could turn right, please. If you could pull over just after the grey Audi, perhaps near the bushy hedge, just pull it near somewhere. 
please. Go to the next cab if you like. Thanks a lot. Okay, so it's time for a manoeuvre. Uh, today I'd like to do the reverse parallel parking manoeuvre. So if we can pull out and stop next to the blue car and park back behind it again, finishing reasonably close and parallel to the kerb. Ideally, if you could stay within two car lengths, which is roughly the space we have in front, and pretend that's a solid kerb all the way. Don't go into the driveway area. Um, when you're ready, have a go. Thanks. We need to demonstrate both good car control and effective observations to complete a manoeuvre safely. Unfortunately, Josh needs a little more practice on this one. I'll do, that's fine. Leave it there, thanks. Yeah, yeah, we're in the box that we asked for, so that's cool. Uh, Alright then, um, no problem. And then when you're ready, we'll just drive on and I'll direct you from now. At the end of this road, if you could turn left. At the end of this road, turn left and then immediately right. Yep, so right turn here, please. If you could pull up on the left again at a safe place. Excellent, thanks. Okay, so shortly we're going to be doing the emergency stop routine. I'm going to, after you've continued driving, I'm going to check it safe and then go stop.
and I want you to stop the car as quickly as you would in a real emergency, uh, under full control. Um, if that's okay? Yep, uh, drive them when you're ready. Great, thanks very much. We won't be doing that again. Drive on again when you're ready. Excellent reactions there and a good blind spot check before moving off. Lovely. If you could follow the road left ahead, please. Well, follow the road that way. And at the end of this road, turn right. At the end of this road, turn right again. Right, please. We should normally leave a metre gap between our car and any parked cars in case of unseen hazards. At the traffic lights, we need to turn left, please. Good decision to stop. It is all too easy to follow the vehicle in front and accidentally pass a red traffic light without realising, so we must always pay attention as we approach traffic lights.
the next roundabout, we need to turn left, first exit. So at the next two roundabouts, we need to go straight ahead, second exit. Yep, so straight ahead again, second exit. and then we'll turn right back into the car park. Let's have a quick look. Uh, yeah, if we could go straight down the middle of the car park, please. Careful of the bump here. And then we'll drive forwards into a space either side of the white car, whichever one you prefer. Thanks very much. Um, you may switch your engine off. That's the end of the test. Right. How do you feel you did? Uh, I'm all right, I think. Spot anything dodgy? I um, don't think so. Okay. <laughs> um, you know what? I was quite impressed. There was a lot of good stuff. Um, there's a couple of reasons why I don't think you passed today, but actually easily fixed. So I could easily see you passing a real test, no problem. Um, I know it looks like a child's been writing this, but that's because I'm not left-handed. And I'm trying to do it with my left hand um, to be more subtle. But um, yeah, I don't think the parallel part was quite good enough. No, that was not. Because you bumped up the cab a little bit, and then later on we rubbed it as well. Yeah. And I was thinking, oh. And then the red car came, and you didn't stop for them. You're supposed to stop for everyone, because it's safer, you know. So I think that would have caught you out. And the other thing was, um, well, your mirrors, um, you're quite good at checking the centre mirror, yeah. but you rarely check the side ones, and you no. never check them before you signal. So we're supposed to check two mirrors, and only if it's safe, then signal. Because, yeah. you know, careless signalling might cause danger. You know, and if you, so you tend to stick a signal on, and then maybe have a look afterwards, but even then, not always. No. Just think, some things are in this mirror that aren't in that mirror, yeah. and... Um, yeah, the examiner will be looking out for that. So it was only minus each time, but as soon as you hit four of those, I'm like, turn it serious. And I just yeah. start marking it. There probably would have been 
10 of them. I don't even know. I stopped counting after a bit. There was one moment where, do you remember when we were coming up back towards Glasswells? And you were, the Santa didn't say anything, so we had to go straight ahead. And you had to do a lane change from the left yeah. lane to the middle lane. Did you check your right mirror? No. What if someone's coming past? You know, it looks to everybody else like you're going left. Um. And then all of a sudden, you move over. And just after that, a grey car went down our right hand side into the right turn lane. Yeah. He could have been closer, you know, so that's the sort of thing. It's not, today we got away with it, yeah. but it could have been worse. And the definition of a serious fault is potential danger. And yeah, that could put you in danger. Yeah. So for changing lanes without a mirror check, um, yeah. I'll give you a serious. So just to remind you, you're supposed to check your mirrors before these three things. Yeah. Anytime you signal, change direction or change speed. And just a couple of times, just like at the last runabout, you stopped, but without a mirror check. Yeah. And why would it be good to know who's behind you when you're stopping? Uh, see how quickly they're coming. Yeah, it could be a van tailgating us, and we could yeah. think, ooh, I'll brake really gently this time. But if you don't know, you brake normally and get hit, maybe. Yeah. So, um, just minus. But it's, it's worth, I think the biggest area to polish up is your mirrors, probably. Yeah. And the one other little thing, which I kind of told you about on the route, was when you were signaling left oh, at Tesco's, yeah. all the people leaving are thinking you're going to go shopping. And I've, I've had that happen on real tests before. You know, if, if they think you're turning left when you're not, they're probably going to pull out, and that's yeah. potential danger as well. So, yeah, I, I put you down in the end for um, five serious faults, which it sounds a lot worse than it was, because on yeah. the arrest, it was good. I've got one more thing I'll probably mention, but in general, it was actually quite a nice drive. All your decisions were good, because we got a lot of busy roundabouts, and you handled all of them nicely. Yeah. Uh, dual carriage was fine. Yeah, so it was 80% good, yeah. a little bit of polish, and, and you can do this. As we have just seen, Josh did not pass his mock test today as he was given several serious faults. However, it is good that he completed the full test route and gained the experience of how a driving test works. We have identified which aspects of his driving need to be improved and once Josh feels he is ready, he can try another mock test route to see how his driving has improved. Thanks very much to Josh for allowing us to film his driving today and if you have your own mock test soon, good luck. If you found this video interesting, then please visit our channel as there are over 150 more tutorial videos to help you improve your driving. If you would like to help us make new videos, then please consider becoming a member of our channel. Thanks for watching.